Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder Series. We're glad you're here. Hi all, my name is Diego Gomez and thank you for coming back to the next episode of Introduction to Unity Catalog and we'll be covering how to store your data within the Metastore. So we've already covered the Metastore, created one and emphasized its importance as a logical construct which won't be storing our data by itself. Feel free to rewatch the last episode to refresh your understanding on the concept of the Metastore if needed. Um, and now we will be covering storage credentials and external locations. These are the key building blocks for enabling data storage within the Unity Catalog. Um, and let's dive deeper into what each of these two concepts does. So the storage credential enables Unity Catalog to connect to an external cloud store. In this case, some examples include an IAM role to access AWS S3 or a managed identity for Azure storage. Um, then the external location itself uses that storage credential to access cloud storage object and selects a specific path, allowing it to have access to specific locations within cloud stores and also fine grained control over external storage. To kind of how to explain how this diagram works, storage credentials are assigned to either a specific storage account or container, depending on the platform that you are and how granular you want to get with your access. And then external locations use these storage credentials to access specific paths um, to store both your data and your metadata. And it's super important to not be misled by the name. External locations can store both managed and external tables. Okay, so now to implement your storage accounts and where you will be storing your data, the first thing is to either use an existing storage account that you have or creating one. In my case, I'll be using one that we already have. And the only thing that we need to make sure of is that the hierarchical namespace or ADLS Gen 2 is enabled. So going back here, we already have our storage account. Let's go ahead and create a container where we will be using to access our data. And this will be um, our initial data storage, which will allow us to create catalogs, store data and metadata within the platform. So we'll be naming this Acne Corp container and then we'll just click create. These are the only two things that we will be needing within the storage account as of right now. So we'll be going back to a resource group and creating a new resource, which is called a Unity Catalog Access Connector, which will be the thing that allows the DataWix platform to access your storage account um, and be able to use this as a location to store your data. So let's create a Unity Catalog Access Connector. And we're just gonna go ahead and click create. Case. The only thing that we'll have to do is make sure that it's within the same region as your storage container and obviously our workspace and that it's in the resource group that you want is something that you can change. Um, in this case, I'll be adding some additional tags. This is something that you can do at your ease if you want to or not. Make sure that it's to Rex back to myself. And we need to make sure that the system assigned managed identity is on. You can use a user designed managed identity if that's something that you wish, but in general, it's not really needed for what we're going to be doing. So now we're going to click on review and create, and this will give us some time as it deploys the initial resource group. So how the deployment is complete. So now we can go into the resource specifically, and we will be needing to take note of the resource ID as we will be using it later on within the platform, um, but we'll get back to this in a second. So now we can go back to our storage account. We have already created the two resources that we need. And now the only thing that we need to do is make sure to grant access to the managed identity that we just created into the storage account itself. So going back to this, um, we need to go, depending on how you want to manage this, as, for, as I had said initially, you can set this at a storage account level and it will be able to access all of your uh, all of your containers within that storage account, or you can use it in a fine grained manner and just make sure it has access to a specific container, which is what we will be doing as of right now. I'll show you how to do both ways. So in this case, we would need to go to access control IAM within the storage account and click on add rule assignment. Um, depending on how you want to manage this, if you just want to manage it at the storage account level that has access to multiple containers, you'll need to look for the storage blob data contributor rule. And this will be more than enough to make sure the managed identity can access all of your containers. In this case, since we won't be doing this and we want to limit it to a specific container, we will be granting it the storage blob, um, storage blob delegator rule, which is what you see right here. 
this case, we can click next. And where it says assign access, so we will be needing to click on our managed identity and then on select members um, and look for that managed identity with, that we just created, based Acme Corp connector, then click on select. So we'll just make him random like data role to storage. In this case, you can just click review and assign. And this will add the role assignment within the storage account itself. But now we need to go down into the container and grant storage blob data contributor, making sure that it can access all the files, everything that we will be needing um, around that as well. So let's go to the Acme Corp container, clicking on access control or IAM and doing the same thing, adding a role assignment. And now we will be looking for a storage blob data contributor. Selecting this role and doing the same exact process that we did at the account level. Um, now going here, looking for Acme Corp. And also to make sure we can go back into our storage account, um, we can also grant or manage identity access to file events, allowing Azure Databricks to subscribe to file event notifications emitted by cloud providers. This will be super useful when ingesting your data if that's something that you want to do. So the only thing that we'll need to do in that case will be adding an additional role, which would be um, storage queue data contributor. And then granting this as well to our managed identity. Okay, clicking on select and then clicking on review and assign. So now the final step that we'll need to do in the terms of storage, will be granting Azure Databricks access to configure file events on your behalf. And there's two things that we have to do here. So we'll be needing to add the storage account contributor role um, to the managed identity as well. So we're looking for storage account contributor and granting this to our managed identity. I have already done this, so I won't be going through the process, just follow the same steps that we've been following through. And now finally, what we're going to need to doing is going back into our uh, resource group and clicking on IAM as well. And we're going to be adding an additional role to our managed identity, in this case, to be able to contribute to event subscriptions from Event Grid. Um, so going to Event Grid, Event Subscription Contributor. This is done at the resource group level, clicking on Next click on manage identity and grant this identity into our um, access connector for Azure Databricks. So in this case, it would be the Acme Corp connector. And review and assign, we'll be adding this to the platform. And now these are all the roles that we'll be needing in order to be allow Databricks to access our data storage. And the only thing that we'll be needing is to configure um, this managed identity on the side of Databricks. So we'll be moving into that. And okay, so going back into our Databricks workspace, um, you can see we have to go to the catalog tab and we'll have to add the configurations that we've already added in order to make sure that we can access our storage accounts um, and containers from the platform itself. So we would require to go into the catalog tab and clicking on external data, then click on storage credentials and create credentials. This will be the first step. And as we have already made the managed identity, we can make an identity. The only thing that we need to do is adding the name, the access connector ID that we had saved from previously. So we'll be adding this here. And you can add a comment if you feel like it, not necessarily needed. And we'll have to click on create. And then after this done, you just grant yourself permissions to make sure um, that you don't run into any issues. This is something that you can change later on and granulate as you wish. So now right after we created our storage credential, we can go back into the external location. Um, so click on the external location tab and click on create location. The only things that we're going to be adding here are a name for our location. In this case, I'll be naming it Acme Corp location, selecting the storage credential that we previously created and also assigning the AVFS bucket path URI. In this case, I already have this here, which would be your container name at storage account name and .dfs.core.windows.net. And then we can just click create. And then once the location is done, 
we can go ahead and click on test connection to make sure that we have all the right permissions and all the right permissions are confirmed here. So let's say now we're able to store our data within that container. Um, so let's say you were to go ahead and create a catalog. You can see that you can select the storage location and we can already use Acme Corp location as one of our storage paths. In case you can add an additional path if that's something that you want. And this would be our initial catalog. So Acme Corp catalog. And from there on, we can start building out schemas, building out tables, and this is something that we will be viewing in the next episode. So thank you all for your attention and see you in the next one.